The National War Memorial, it's one of my favorite sites in Ottawa, a stunning statue paying tribute to our nation's fallen and those who have served. This memorial was dedicated to honor the fallen of the First World War on May 21st, 1939 by King George VI. It happened just 103 days before the start of the Second World War. Fitting, I guess, the First World War was called the War to End All Wars. That was the idealist view, but it never happened that way. Our boys were off to fight mere months after this magnificent memorial was unveiled. We've updated it since then. It was in 1982 that we rededicated it to add the Second World War and the Korean War. I can't believe that it took that long, but it did. Then in 2014, we added the Afghan War, the Second Boer War, as well as soldiers killed in other conflicts. Seems that the First World War didn't really end anything. We can't stop sending our soldiers overseas. As we mark Remembrance Day today, there are Canadian soldiers stationed in Iraq, Ukraine, Kosovo. We have HMCS Brandon and HMCS Edmonton patrolling in the Pacific, and we've had a rotation of ships all taking part in patrolling the Caribbean all year long. We never stop creating new veterans of conflicts, big or small, and nor should we ever stop honoring them. Remembrance Day is a once a year event most people think of the old vets, the vets of past wars, but we have a whole new generation of vets my age and younger that also need to be honored as we mark this day. Remembrance Day has always been personal for me. I never used to think that I came from a, a military family, but on reflection, I guess I kind of do. My grandfather fought in the Second World War in Burma. He encouraged me to get involved. I did minimal time as a reservist and I have a stepbrother that's still serving in the military. One of my oldest friends is in the military still because of me. And I've got in-laws all over the forces. During the Afghan war, there was rarely a time I didn't have a friend or a family member in the middle of the fighting. I don't miss those days at all, waking up to emails from national defense media relations saying that we'd suffered more casualties and then waiting to find out the name, waiting to find out if I or someone I knew had lost a loved one. So yes, honoring the vets is personal for me, not just on Remembrance Day, but all through the year. Our soldiers need to be paid well while they're serving. And when they leave the service, they deserve our full support. We need to do more than just saying, let's get behind helping them out with PTSD. We need job transitioning groups like Helmets to Hard Hats and more groups like them. We need employers to understand that while military experience may not look like a linear fit for the job they're trying to fill, the skills and leadership qualities built up in the military can benefit many companies. We don't have the same issues on the same scale as our American neighbors do with veterans' homelessness and suicide, but it does exist and it needs to be addressed, not just through government programs, but by community groups, groups like Vets Canada, and they do things like boots on the ground walks through major cities. They seek out homeless vets and then offer them support to help get them off the streets. The men and women of our armed forces, past and present, they put it all on the line for us. They either did or were willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. The least that we can do is support them. That means more than wearing a poppy in November. That means doing more than thanking them or buying them a coffee at Tim's, that, although that's encouraged and appreciated, I'm told. This Remembrance Day, I'm reminding you that they gave more when we asked them. Can you do more for them now?